we try to bring a balance to say not everything that we see is demonic. You get what I mean? And going on with that, the church is swinging to the other extreme of nothing is demonic. The church is almost believing that nothing is demonic, which is so sad. A strategy of the devil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Praise the Lord. The, when, when we were in Bungoma this last time, there were two people that came for prayers. They were epileptic. Yeah? And we cast demons out of them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I oh, say, so, oh, do you mean everyone with epilepsy is, 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 is under demonic oppression, is under demonic attack? Is that? that is not what I am saying. But you see that devil loves it so much. When there is that loophole, he loves it when some, we are not sure of something. That's the one he takes. He enters in that. He loves that. Even many... One of these days I'll share with you here about, about that, about the spirit, like the spirit of infirmity. And you see, a person like Smith Wigglesworth had many results because to Smith Wigglesworth, everything was demonic. You get what I mean? So he had more results. Now I don't mean that we should be like that, but doesn't that tell us something? Whoever came to Smith Wigglesworth, he addressed a demon. He addressed a demon. For him, he believed everything. You're blind, it's, you, it's a demon. You're this, it's a demon. You're, now, all sickness is the devil. Praise the Lord. But that, that, that not everything is, is demonic. I wonder if that makes sense to us. Yeah? That makes sense. Yeah? The devil, there was no sickness before the devil. The devil, sickness came as a result of sin. And it is the desire for, of the devil to do that. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Hallelujah. But you see, there is sickness. There are germs. There is bacteria. There are all these things. And you see, there is sickness that is directly caused by these things. It has nothing. There is poor eating, accidents, all this. But now the devil loves to take opportunity when these things happen. I know people that I have prayed for that had pain in the leg, pain that never left, but it began with an accident. And I'm sure you may also know somebody who is like, every year around this time, that pain comes back. And how did the pain come? They were playing football. Have you heard of that? Yeah? And then they are saying, every year, if it was just an accident, Really? Do your bones, they have what? A rhythm in them that they know it's now 12 months down the lane. We should start hurting again. No. The devil came in. Because he likes that it was an open door. He came in because he knew that you would reason about it for so long. Like, I don't think this one needs prayers. I think this one, I don't think I... Yeah. As he was taking a stronghold there. So this boy comes. Jesus brings this boy. I mean this boy is brought to, to the disciples. Why does this man bring the boy to the disciples? He believed. Don't you think he believed? Like he would not have brought him if he did not believe. And why does this man believe? Because these very disciples, Jesus had sent them out to cast out demons before. And they cast out demons and he says as they, they came back and told him demons are subject to us. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. In other words, Jesus is affirming what they are saying. Like you guys are powerful. But don't just rejoice in that. Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. So the father brings, because the father would not have brought to the disciples if he knew they would do nothing about it. He brought because he knew that they had something to do. And these guys failed to cast out the demon. And Jesus comes from the mountain and he meets them and they tell him this. Let's continue. And he answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straight away, the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. 
and oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But it, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. You know, isn't it amazing? Like he says that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I've prayed for a number of people who have been possessed. And this exact thing used to happen to them. I've prayed for people that had burns. And it's because they would fall in fire. Real demonic. For them to be destroyed. And the man comes. He comes to... He comes to he, Jesus... When, when this demon is not cast out by the disciples, Jesus rebukes them for their unbelief or lack of faith. Yeah? It is used interchangeably, but we're going to realize that the problem here was unbelief, not lack of faith. The problem was unbelief. And Jesus does not make an excuse. And you see, this is something that we should really learn from Scripture. Jesus, you know, Jesus would have said... He would have given some reason. He would have taught them why this demon is not going to go. He would, you know, th th this would be, a, today, today in the church, this is a very good thing to, you know, say this thing is not just demonic, you know. This guy needs to be taken to a psychiatrist. Praise the Lord. Like there would be something, but Jesus rebukes them because of their unbelief. And the man asked Jesus, if thou canst. Doesn't that show you that that is the highest level of unbelief? Yeah? We don't come to God like that. Okay, maybe we do, but we don't show it. Praise the Lord. But he comes. Imagine you come to God and like, God, <laughs> if you have ability. That's what that man is saying. God, if it is, if it is possible for you, if, if, if you can handle this, I know it's big. But if you can handle it, yeah, yeah let's, let's go on. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straight away, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. He believed he had faith, but he also had unbelief. He believed, but he also had unbelief. And see how it is so amazing that when this boy was brought to Jesus, he manifested again right away. Many manifestations are for the devil to instill fear. He says it, the, the spirit would tear him apart, pine on the floor and all that. And many times it is to cast fear. And many times the manifestations mean he's been discovered, he's been found out, he can't hide anymore. And you see, faith, like many say, faith does not deny facts. You get what I mean? But it denies them influence. Praise the Lord. It does not deny. Jesus didn't say, no, this boy has no demon. You know, that's not what Jesus said. But Jesus denied that demon the influence. That demon could not continue tormenting this boy. And he tells him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. If you can believe, all things are possible. If you can believe. And the man says, I believe, but help my unbelief. In other words, these two coexisted. Yeah, this is going to be very important for where we are going. Praise the Lord. Yeah, and to just take a minute and thank God that you believe. Yeah, and to just tell God, Thank you for giving me your measure of faith. That I have the measure of faith. I believe, I believe your word. All things are possible if thou canst believe. Thank Him that nothing is impossible to you because you believe. You believe his word. You believe what he said about you. You believe that if he said it, he will bring it to pass. Thank him that you, he believed. Yeah, I want to hear you thanking God. 
Aren't you, are you telling him, thank you for the measure of faith that you've dealt to me. Thank you, I believe. Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Thank you, Jesus. It is very important for you to always remind yourself of that. Otherwise, the devil will come and beat you. Praise the Lord. I remind yourself, you believe. Thank God for the faith that in, 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 in Romans, it's Romans chapter 12, verse 3, where he says that he's dealt to each of us the measure of faith. The measure, like King James says, it's the measure of faith. Not a measure of faith, the measure. Meaning it is the same, it's that particular. And you see, Paul said in Galatians 2.20 that he lives by the faith of the Son of God. He did not say, I live by faith in the Son of God. He said, the faith, the faith of the Son of God, not in the Son of God. This is the measure that we are all given. Praise the Lord. And this man said, help. He said, I believe, help my unbelief. These two can coexist, yeah? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, yeah, let's start from verse 1. From verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You remember during the time I was sharing about using our mind, our imagination, and I was telling us hope is the picture. Faith paints it. There is no faith without hope. That is why it is okay for you to dream. And dreaming is free. So don't dream small. No one is going to put you at gunpoint for dreaming. Praise the Lord. So if you're dreaming, dream the craziest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I preach, I dream the craziest things. Praise the Lord. I dream one day. You know, if I'm walking on the road somewhere, maybe there has been an accident and somebody has been shattered. And I gather those body parts and just bring them together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, so bring the hand here. Bring the head here. Put them together now. Walk again. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, faith paints the picture. Praise the Lord. Faith paints the picture. Let's go on with Hebrews. He says, evidence, substance of things hoped for. Do you know why many of us don't see our faith? Let's go back to the scripture. Why many of us don't have, don't see our faith at work? Because we've not even hoped for anything. We've not taken the word of God. And you see, this is so big in Africa, especially because we know how to pray. We come and pray in tongues for seven hours and nothing happens. Because there was no hope. So if you get in the word of God, when you're praying, you're praying according to his will. So as you pray in tongues for seven hours, it is just like a person who is not visualizing what to draw, an artist who has not visualized what to draw, they can spend all the time with that brush and paint and nothing will ever come out. When we get in the word of God, our hope is created. Now when we come and pray, we take a hold of it. And prayer is so powerful. Praise the Lord. So powerful. Many times our lack of hope has made it seem like it is not powerful. Yeah? Yeah? And he's saying it is the evidence of things hoped for. Yeah? For by, by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Isn't that amazing? In today's church this would be, I don't know what we would call it. It would not be right. Because many of us think faith comes from understanding isn't it but here he's telling us that understanding comes from faith that it is by faith that we understand so, so faith is not just here faith is just not meant to us and faith is not that I thought about it for long then it made sense then that is faith no he's saying by faith we understand in other words, reasoning is not going to get us there. We are never going to understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Out of the unseen, we are never going to understand that. 
that can only happen by faith. Praise the Lord. You shake your neighbor and tell them, I have the faith of God. And I understand. Shake them one more time. Tell them, I have the faith of God. And I understand. Isn't this amazing? That by faith we can understand. It is by faith. That is why for you there are many things that make sense to you that don't make sense to the world. You can sit and debate and explain and the virgin birth will never make sense. It is by faith that we understand that a virgin conceived. It is by faith that we understand that there is a heaven. It is by faith. So you see, so as we've been talking about the mind, talking about uh, our imagination, how this is so important, yeah? It is so important. But if our imagination, our reasoning, our understanding, our intellect is coming in the way of faith, yeah? Then we are believing the wrong thing. Praise the Lord. Then we are believing the wrong thing because there is understanding that is only going to come by faith. Praise the Lord. There is understanding that is only going to come by faith. Does it mean you should not use your brain? Use your brain. Praise the Lord. But there are times that your brain is not going to be profitable. More so those around you. Moses, who came to deliver the children of Israel out of captivity, on his GPS, he leads them to a sea. With no boat, no ship. He wasn't using his brain. So if he was waiting for reasoning to get understanding, he would have missed this miracle. You know what I mean? At least if they carried, if they had Noah, maybe people were like, have you resurrected Noah? Are you coming with Noah? You get what I mean? But he's straight headed to the Red Sea. And he says he came to deliver these children. I think they are thinking he came actually to bury us. We, we've not been good enough. He's taking us to drown us. Now even you, there is understanding that God is going to give you that is understanding by faith. And you see the world cannot perceive it. You get what I mean? You're going to say, let's invest here. <laughs> and you see, that understanding is just by faith. It is somebody of faith who will know that that is where to invest. That at that level. So faith is not, faith is not living being intellectual. No, it is just above the intellect. It goes above intellect, human intellect. It goes above. You get what I mean? It goes way above. And that is why he says that he's chosen the foolish things of this world. He's chosen the foolish things of this world to debase these, the, the things that we, we look up to, the noble things that we call to. And you realize that many times, many people in faith obtained things that are unbelievable up to today. Yeah? I was just giving you the example of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He went to America and he saw Oral Roberts University. Yeah? He saw the plane this man had. An airstrip. And you see, in a minute, he really thought, if I come to America and be ministering in America, I'll make it big financially. And God rebuked him. And God told him, faith works anywhere. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Wherever you are operating in faith is the green pastures. Wherever you are, that's where the green pastures are. Yeah. Yeah. People will run away from you, go for green pastures, then they will come back for green pastures from you. You get what I mean? Yeah. People will leave here and go to America to upgrade, to study, to do what then they will come and you will employ them. Because you are using faith. You get what I mean? 
Faith knows no failure. It will work anywhere. So he came back. He, first of all, he was excommunicated from church because he bought a motorbike. He loved the things of the world. He was becoming too rich. You get what I mean? Yeah. How do you buy a motorbike? A boda boda, that small motorbike. It was not a BMW. He didn't buy a big bike. It was a small, and he was excommunicated from church. Leave church. You, you after riches, you've gone after things. You see why I normally say that <laughs> being rich is relative. Yeah. yeah, today somebody will criticize you of, oh, you are a preacher. Do you really need that car? You get what I mean? But even them, they have a smartphone, and there's somebody also wondering, do they really need a smartphone to communicate? You get what I mean? It is relative. Yeah. yeah. As long as you're not at my level, I am extravagant. Praise the Lord. Yeah, when you get to my level now, you realize actually it is not being extravagant. So at that time, being extravagant was a motorbike. Today, no preacher is criticized online for having a motorbike. That time, he was excommunicated from church. Then one day, a lady from that church got into labor. And they called him for his motorbike to take her to hospital. You get what I mean? But you know, he paid the price. Preacher to first build a university in Africa. Preacher to first ever drive a Benz in Africa. Yeah? To do meetings outside Africa fully paid for by him, not being a beggar. And many came from all over the world to get that template. Why? Faith. At that time, he understood by faith. To the fellow Nigerians, you're crazy. You think you can build a university? You who grew up in poverty. You think you can do this? You get what I mean? But faith. Bishop David Oyedepo God told him I will build a 50,000 seater cathedral. By that time they were less than 90 in their church. And for the next three years, these three or five years, they grew to 135. Yeah, they grew to 135 and they were going to build a 50,000 seater. Now, do you see how that is understanding that comes by faith? Every day he knew it. We are going to build 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 it by faith. Praise the Lord. By faith. By faith. Many things happening in your life, the direction, the course that God has sent you, has set you on by faith. Praise the Lord. When we were getting married, many people didn't think we would survive up to now. You get what I mean? We were told that we are never going to eat love. We've eaten love. <laughs> no. no. Let me tell you. It's just that love has less calories, so that's why we don't see the kitambi. But we are not hungry. You get it? <laughs> it is. It is not. It is. Yeah, it's not high in cholesterol. But at least you can see I'm not as small as I was before I got married. Yeah. That time there was understanding, and that is why yesterday I was sharing with somebody, and I'm like many times. By faith, you will get understanding. Don't try so much to defend yourself. Don't try so much to explain to people. Time will vindicate you. Because see, as much as you try, you're, never, you're not going to be able. Yeah? <laughs> it cannot see. I cannot be able. Eh? I cannot. <laughs> I cannot can. Yeah? There are things that God is going to speak to you that are going to be so crazy. So to understand them, it will be by faith. Just like by faith, understanding. You know when you sit with many atheists, they will be like, <laughs> you really mean that as in God just spoke and mountains just appeared? Does that make sense to you? And I'm like, yes, by faith. Yeah. It's just that we are in a different realms. But you see, it makes sense, a lot of sense to me. A lot of sense, actually. 
actually there is no way it cannot make sense to me. <laughs> actually, it's even hard to think about it that these things just happened without God speaking. <laughs> that is what does not make sense to me. But that faith, understanding comes by this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this man said, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. He believed, but he wanted his God to help him in his unbelief. So it is so possible for you to have faith, as much faith as I don't know what faith. Yeah? Yet also have unbelief. And that unbelief will hinder you from seeing the results that you're meant to see. And that is why I was saying that if your intellect, if your reasoning is getting in the way of your faith, then you're believing the wrong thing. Praise the Lord. You're believing the wrong thing. Now, as you know, we've talked about, we've talked about the mind. We've talked about imagination. And I'm not saying you should not use your mind. Yeah? But there are things that God speaks to you and understanding comes. Like I was saying on Sunday, uh, sharing about this, the seeds that were sown on rocky ground. That they sprang up so fast because the ground was shallow. They grew so fast. You get what I mean? Then they died because they didn't bear much root. Then the ones that fell among the thorns, they also grew, they came up so fast. Then they were choked by the thorns, by the cares of this world. And when the word comes, if we are on fertile ground, fertile ground will bring weeds, it will bring thorns. Thorns are weeds. Praise the Lord. They are weeds and they will come. Tears will come. As long as it is fertile ground, they will be there. Praise the Lord. And when they come, they can hinder, like I told us on Sunday, that weeds are very amazing because they endure long. Yeah? Weeds are not, weeds are not, uh, weeds are like Kalenjins. They are long distance runners. You get what I mean? Yeah, you when you start as American, yeah? What are, who are the Americans? Gatlin, who? John, Jones, Marion, who? Hussein Bolt. Them, you know, they will go. In the first 100 meters, they are up there. Yeah? Kemboy will just be sipping mursik and just... But you know, after an hour, <laughs> Hussein Bolt will be breathing. Kembo will just be beginning. <laughs> Isn't that what you've seen when we watch these races? They are not number one until the last kilometer. That's when you're like, <laughs> this guy. Now, weeds are that way. They don't kill you right away. Weeds are not like a pest. Yeah? Weeds are not like a rodent, a rat, a mole that comes in the garden and, and eats the roots. No, weeds are not that way. Yeah. Gradually, they can even be growing at the same pace. So you believe your plant is growing. But you see, you start harvesting and you realize you're harvesting less than you're meant to harvest. Less than you're meant to harvest. You're not being as fruitful as you're meant to be. So you leave weeds. You will harvest the maize, but it will be a very small one. You'll harvest those, whatever you're harvesting, but it will be a small one. And eventually you'll not be able to harvest anything. Praise the Lord. Now that is how unbelief works. And when Jesus rebukes and challenges them for their unbelief, when he says this cannot go except by prayer and fasting, he was addressing the unbelief. He was not addressing the demon. Many people have said that it is the demon that he was saying. But you see, there is nowhere in scripture where that is supported. There is nowhere else where that can be supported. He said, in my name you shall drive out demons. And we never see any other scenario where he said, that it is by fasting that demons should be driven out. Praise the Lord. Which is poor Bible interpretation. To base a doctrine on one, on one verse. But you see, he, he rebuked them of the unbelief here. 
He's saying this kind cannot go except by prayer and fasting. And you, know, you would think that Jesus would go back and fast, then he comes and rebukes it. You get what I mean? But it is because he lived this way. This was his lifestyle. He didn't fast when he encountered the issue. Because see, many times that is what we want. Actually, many, you know, because we're in a microwave generation, we also believe that in church. You say, Pastor, this month I tithe, but my salary was not increased. Actually, I was... What of the 20 years you are not tithing? You get what I mean? Like... <laughs> You know, now that you've made it right once, God also has to make it right all of a sudden. And, and you see, it does not only come when it, 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 it's not only when it comes to money, but it is everything. You know, I want to start my lifestyle of praying. It is going to start today when the landlord has given me an eviction letter. Now today is when I'm going to learn to pray for long, for 30 minutes. Like I'm Father, that landlord, blind him. You've given me authority. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Then you go home and he's not blind. <laughs> Actually, he was waiting for you. You have to have a lifestyle and your lifestyle should be the one to respond to situations. Not a one moment thing. Praise the Lord. And that is why, like Christianity, Jesus uses many parables that have seed than for the sower, the tares. Why? Because our faith, our life is like seed. And why does Jesus use the example of seed, a mustard seed? It is because to seed, there is time. Praise the Lord. As long as you speak about seed, you've taken away instant. Yeah? When you see grass growing instantly, it is because seeds were there. Yeah? I normally say that the overnight success that you see has taken seven years. The night has been seven years. And it is the same thing in the faith walk. And the problem is that when we don't see results, many of us stop sowing faith seeds. Yet, you see, you come and pray today. Maybe it's about your landlord and things don't happen like you thought they would happen. Don't stop praying. The next day, come pray. The other day, come pray. Pray for one hour. Pray for two hours. Pray. After a few years, you will start seeing results after results because you sowed for so long. But your lifestyle should be a lifestyle of sowing spiritual seeds. Pray. Study the word. Praise the Lord. Emergence may not work sometimes. There are times it will work. Praise the Lord. God has put room for SOS. Hallelujah. But there are times it will not work. There are times you will want the miracle in that time and it will not work. Because no seed has been sown to make it come to pass. It is just now that you're sowing that seed. So that season you will make a loss, but that seed is going to stay in the ground. Now a time is going to come where that seed is going to bear fruit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Very important. So Jesus rebukes them of this. And because this unbelief is like weeds. That is how they grant is saying this can only be uprooted by prayer and fasting. Why does he say by prayer and fasting? Because you see, during prayer and fasting, we devote ourselves to God. Fasting is different from hunger strike. You get what I mean? Hunger strike is when you don't go with, you, you refuse food. Now here we, we give up food because we are hungry for something more than food. We give up food to utilize that time and that energy to get something that can give us what food cannot give us. So you can't just fast and the whole day you're on Netflix and you say, I'm fasting. The whole day you're yawning. When you're fasting is when you decide to do all the laundry in the house. Is when you decide, oh, I've not visited and so and so. I've not visited so and so. I've not looked at these houses. I've not looked at this. No, you're just on a hunger strike. And many times you see a strike. What is a strike based on? I'll not eat until they increase our salary. We will not eat until they do this. And many Christians, that's how many Christians fast. I'm fasting until my landlord forgives me. That's it. I'm fasting until God forgive, until God does something there. That's a hunger strike. Now that's not what Jesus went on to. That is why we see that when he encountered situations, that's not when he fasted. 
because he lived a fasted life. And during this time of the fasted life, the weeds were uprooted and good seeds were replacing that. So when a situation came, there's already fruit. There's already power to combat that situation. We are going to be fasting in January. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we are fasting in January. Right from fast, we will have Akesha here on 31st and on fast. On fast, we start fasting. <laughs> I'm deep. <laughs> I'm deep. On fast, we start fasting. And that fast is of the first month. Yeah. Hallelujah. Without fasting, the fast will not... Let's, let's just stop there. I'm deep. <laughs> hey. I'm very deep. <laughs> I've gone deeper. <laughs> If you want to be deep, learn to rhyme. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doesn't that show you how congregants are very gullible and very unstudied in the things of God? Had somebody tell me. There are five P's of life. Joseph was taken through the pit and Potiphar's house, prison, palace, Prime Minister. The five P's of life. Each of us will go through five P's of life. Hey. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can see congregants are like, wow, that was deep. Musically, it was deep. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Theologically, it was exciting. Hallelujah. Yeah, Matthew 18. Let's read from it. I mean Matthew 13, from 18 to 23. If I ever invite you here to preach and you start doing such things, you will never finish that sermon. <laughs> we will call the worship team. <laughs> we'll send you to go and study the Bible. <laughs> And you know, we know how to do this. You know, preachers know how to do this. Yeah, you see, if they had not sold Joseph, he would not have seen your testimony, his testimony. If your boss does not fire you, how will you see the Lord's uplifting? You know, then you're like, show me in scripture, show me in scripture that I have to be fired. Just console me. Tell me God has another opportunity for you. Don't lie to me that God needed me to be fired before promoting me. You know, it would be like God was wasting time. He got me somewhere so that I can be fired, then be promoted. Hmm? You know, and we, as a church, we like that. We like... Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, the, the, that's like the, the leaf, the water of the, of the wheat, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tear also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir did not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tears he said unto them an enemy hath done this the servant said unto him wilt thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay lest while ye gather up the tears ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into 
my barn. Praise the Lord. He's saying that the tares are going to grow with the wheat. Because you see, there is not different rain for tares than wheat. When it starts raining, they say, oh, this one was specifically for the wheat. Even if you're irrigating, it is not selective in irrigating. It will water that. Even when you put fertilizer, actually the, weed, the, the weeds rejoice fast. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when you put manure in your, your farm, the, weed, the, the weeds come up very fast. They rejoice. They think you are doing it for them. I think finally you thought about us. He's saying they will grow together. But he says do not gather them right now. Don't uproot them because you will uproot the wheat also. In other words, there is a great similarity many times. Yeah? In the parable of the soil, it says, but when, it, when, they, when these grew, cares of this world, thorns choked them. And you see, cares of this world sometimes are good. You can't easily differentiate between the weeds and the real crop. And that is how these thorns go to choke these plants. Because you see, many times, especially as you grow, the Bible says that in the last days, if possible, even the very elect will be deceived. But how will the devil deceive the very elect? John Bever has written a book called Good or God. But he does not necessarily use bad or good. It is between good or God. Good is not necessarily God. So because the devil knows that you've got to a place where now you've fallen on fertile ground, you've not fallen on rocky ground, you've not fallen on the wayside. So he knows here, I can't kill you by not bearing roots. What I can do, since the ground is fertile, I can introduce seeds of tares. I can introduce seed of weeds. Those that attended uh, the Spirit of Faith graduation on Sunday, it was Saturday, last Saturday, yeah, the preacher, yeah, is Pastor Chris, pastor of AIC in Gong Road. He preached a very powerful sermon, and he told us something about them growing up, how they used to, to hunt, yeah, and he said when hunting, at times, they would be like the village, the whole village or clan is really starving. They don't have food. It's a dry time and they don't have food. So the men go out to hunt. They go out with the dogs because the dogs chase the prey and then either catch it or they make it tired. So it's easy for you to, to just shoot with your arrow. So he says, now when, when it's been long, you need food, you need meat, you chase the big animal, like the eland, yeah? the, which is the biggest antelope. They, they're even close, even somewhere in Earth River, you see their elands there. Yeah? I've seen them there, and Ada was asking me, he, she was calling them cows. We went to see zebras, then we found these ones there also, and I had a tough time to explain. But... <laughs> They are big. So if one is goat and it is slaughtered, even here as a church, okay, I was going to say we can't finish. Then I looked at some faces. <laughs> but it can feed us, okay. It, <laughs> let me just leave it at that it can feed us. <laughs> it can feed us as a church. <laughs> yeah. It's big. It's big. It's you know. It's 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 more than. It can go to more than two hundred kilograms. It can even go to more than two hundred kilograms. So it's big. So as the dogs are chasing it, he says many times when the dogs would be chasing it, and a what a rabbit would cross the path, and then that dog would go for the rabbit. <laughs> then they come with the rabbit. Wag, wag, wagging their tail happy but you as the hunter you're not pleased because that is another night of hunger because that rabbit you can eat alone you get what I mean the other one was going to feed the whole clan now it's got you this and that is what the devil does 
That is what the weeds are. They are prey. They are still prey. But they are not God's ultimate. And that's why I was emphasizing on Sunday. It can be a job. You know how it is easy to explain that job? But my family should leave. Do you see how it is good? So normally the choice is not between good and bad. It is good and God. You get what I mean? It can be a marriage. It can be children. And you see, Jesus made this so clear by telling the disciples, if you love your family more than you love me, you're not worthy of me. Jesus was showing them, I'm the eland. Those are rabbits. The bigger picture is here. And there are many things that are going to come that way. That there is this that God has given to you, which you only understand by faith. But something good will come, which can be understood by intellect. Something that would be cool to explain to your friends. And you will choose that because it is not bad. You're not choosing to steal. You're not choosing to do something. But it is a tear that was sown. And yet as it was growing to that level, he said, don't pull it out. Let's we will pull out the real seed. Because you see, when God is operating where his presence is, everyone will thrive. The tears and the weeds, like when he pours out his rain, all will thrive. Whatever, whatever made John and Peter fat is what was making Judas Iscariot also fat. Maybe fatter. You know what I mean? Because even when he came to betray Jesus, he's the only one Jesus referred to as his friend. Even when he came, look at how close they are. He said, my friend, is it with a kiss that you betray me? As in he was so close to Jesus that he would even randomly come and kiss him. Doesn't that show you how close they were? Yet he was the weed. But you see, three years before that, it was too early to pull him out. Otherwise, Peter would have been pulled out first. Then he tells, feed my flock. Because Peter is the one who manifested foolishness immediately, very fast. <laughs> yeah, Judas Iscariot was. And many of these weeds may not manifest foolishness right away. It is the seed of God that may manifest foolishness right away. I gave you an example when God spoke to me and told me to, like after I finished college, go to this island to minister. I went and in my heart, you know, believing God, I'm sure that God told me this is the house I should get. And people ask me, how are you going to pay for it? I'm like, God has told me this is the house. God has told me this is the house. And I went and got into that house. I was able to pay, what, the first, I don't remember, but I paid for a very short time. Then, things became tough. I had a wilderness experience in my pockets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's the spirit of drought in my pocket. Their tears can't even grow. You know, tears don't like drought. Weeds don't like drought. <laughs> Nothing likes drought. <laughs> it's a bad place to be. And I feel, and the landlord puts a lock on this place. You know, and God's man of faith was embarrassed. God's man of faith was wondering, what do I do? People called me foolish and I told them, no, God will provide. I felt they, they are not people of faith. You get what I mean? And during that time, I came out my parents have been very, very key in my faith journey. Very key. They know how to nurture the seed. They know how not to pull out the seed thinking they are pulling out the tear. My parents did not blame me. You get what I mean? So they did not uproot the... They didn't try to uproot the weed thinking they would uproot... Maybe they would have uprooted the seed. You get what I mean? They asked me, how much do you owe the man? And they paid it. You get it? Of which I went against their advice. Because they told me, but how are you going to sustain yourself and all that? But they told me, if it's a faith journey, we don't want to get in the way of your faith. You get what I mean? And you see, they, they, they helped me. They paid, cleared, and got back my things. A few months later, 
I tell them God had told me to go to Kenya. <laughs> How are you going to live? So do you see what I'm saying? This was a seed of faith. Do you see why it was important for the weeds not to be uprooted at that time? Because this would have been killed. There are many more blunders I have done. But you see, that was not the last time I made such a move. It was a seed that was not ready. And many of us have been killed at that level. The weed was uprooted. And we didn't know we were uprooting the seed. Yeah. You believed for healing. You did not see it. Then in uprooting weeds, you thought, now I should be of wisdom. You see, last time we believed like this and it did not work. And you uprooted the seed of faith. And from that time, you've never been able to use your faith. Everything is in the reasoning realm. I'm so glad that my parents helped me with that. I don't think we would be here today. I would have coiled back. It would have been very hard to take any other instruction like that from God. Praise the Lord. But my parents were very, very supportive. I remember even, even my father-in-law, the very first time I met him, so you, how do you live? You're just pastoring, you, you're just there and what? And I told him, I live by faith. God has sustained me since I came and what? <laughs> and you know what he told me? He told me, I will not get in the way of faith. I have also lived by faith. Yeah. And he told me with my wife, he gave us a go ahead. As in he was the easiest to convince. He said, if it is faith, go on with the faith journey. That is what he told us. You know what I mean? Thank God that he put such people on my path. Some of you may not get such people on your path. But you know what you need to do? Take the word of God. Because many times, this seed of the tears, of the weed, it grows. You see, like I've said that, by faith, we understand. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Or out of what was not seen, it is by faith that we understand this. The things that God is going to speak to you, it is by faith that you're going to understand them. But if we let the tears, because you see, if we, if we don't uproot the tears, but we continue doing what we should do for the seed, eventually this seed is going to grow to a place where it is so clear that this is a tear and this is a weed. It is just like I've been to Nyahururu to wheat farms. And many times in these farms, there is also barley. Barley is growing. Yeah, amongst the wheat. And when they are very young, you can't tell. You know, this was a real, I'd never seen a wheat farm or garden since I, before I came to Kenya. You get it? So when I came, that's when I was like, wow, this is how wheat looks. Then when I saw this, they told me that is barley, that is not wheat. But you see, when they are, you can't tell. And I'm like, so how does barley come here? It's because of, you know, where the seeds are bought. Somewhere, these seeds get mixed up somewhere. But you see, when they grow, they are so clear. A farmer who knows wheat can tell this is. But you see, when they are just out of the ground, they all just look like grass. So if you start uprooting that way, you finish the wheat before you reach the, the barley. You'll finish the wheat. But what do you do? You continue doing things that make the wheat grow. You know at what stage you need to spray the wheat. You know what manure to put on the wheat. You know what, to, you keep doing those things. Eventually that wheat grows and these tears are so clear. You can now uproot them and burn them. And now this is the same thing with our lives. Because if we continue, there are things that are clearly food for the tears. So if we keep feeding the tears, they will grow more than the seed that we want to grow, more than the crop that we want to grow. That as you grow, there are things that are coming to your mind. There are things that you're hearing. There are things that, if you don't cut them off, eventually you'll get to the place where this man got and said, I believe, help my unbelief. It means you believe your faith is there. But you have too many questions that your faith cannot override them. You have, you've reasoned so much 
that you can't get understanding by faith. You get what I mean? And I'm sure this is what happened to Judas Iscariot. He really thought about it. Three years, the kingdom has not come. What have we gained? It's true I've been stealing from the account, but look at me. I have nothing to show for it. You know, I like maybe if I sell him, let me just sell him off. We, 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 we get done with this. We, you know, we, we, because as long as he's here, we are not free. You, you get what I mean? So if I sell him off, we can go back to fishing and whatever we, we needed to do. And you see, whatever God had spoken, whatever Jesus used to speak, those seeds were planted in Judas Iscariot. But that doubt was too grown that these things that would cause faith were not that strong. The wall put up by the unbelief was so strong. Praise the Lord. That's how this man came and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And many times when God speaks to us, God gives you a message. You think about it for so long. You reason about it. You reason about it. The tears are growing. A time is going to come where your faith cannot necessarily break through that hedge. And now you need to pray and fast to first deal with that unbelief for a while. So the results we don't see many times, it is not because we don't have faith. It is because the tears have grown so much. The unbelief has grown so much. We've reasoned a lot concerning what God has said. We flipped it and you see that's what I look when the disciples fell here. Jesus did not, he did not try to explain. And you see, that is one thing that I have learned. Not to make excuses for God, excuses that he's not making. To just feel that I should grow more. When I see a failure, and yet I see in his word, he said, if you believe all things are possible, I say I want to believe better. I want all that unbelief gone. It is not time to make an excuse for this. It is not time to say, you see, Jesus would have said, oh, you see, it's not God's timing. But in God's timing, he rebuked them. Today, we've justified many scenarios where he would have rebuked us of our unbelief. And we said, you see, it was, it, it was not the right timing. We didn't pray enough. We didn't pray long enough. Oh, the person didn't believe enough. Jesus did not care. Because see, many times we, bl we blame it on the person that we are praying for. And you see, that justifies us to stay at that level with our unbelief, with our weeds in. Because as long as there is somebody to blame it for our situation, to blame it on, we will stay at that level. It is like poverty. As long as somebody can justify it, they will always be poor. Isn't it true? As long as there is always an uncle to blame for not paying your school fees, you will always be poor. As long as there is always a, a, a brother to blame for not giving you money, you will always be poor. As long as there is a pastor to always blame, you will always be poor. Whoever is going to become rich realizes actually that is why you should have a bit of the capitalist mindset. Survival for the fittest. The worldly people know it. 50 Cent said, get rich or die trying. Him, he didn't say I grew up in the ghettos. He didn't say I grew up in, in the hood. I'm going to be poor. I'm a black guy. The whites will never give us opportunity. He said, I will try or I will die trying. Non-believer. He knew that as long as I keep justifying, I'll stay there. If I say no, and that is the same thing to the faith journey. We can keep saying all oh, this and this. And I told you this was challenging, especially when I was really venturing out in healing. Because my dad was sick for a very long time. For a very long time. And I'm praying for people and they are getting healed. And you think questions did not come in my mind? If this God is really powerful, why doesn't he heal your dad? You get what I mean? And it is possible for me to feed myself on those questions so much because those are the tears. And they're the ones that were sown at night. You see, he says that while I slept, while you sleep, that's when the tears are sown. How do you sleep? He keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. The moment your mind wanders off the Lord, you're sleeping. And that is when they are sowed in. You came in faith, you came believing, then your mind wandered off, then tears were sown. Like you see, even brother, so and so it didn't happen. Even so and so it didn't happen. Even as we do church, you know, sometimes those things come. 
meeting here. We want to do a meeting in Bungoma. We are here. We are still a growing church. Look at our numbers and what. Then you see in my mind, I'm like, hey, the other church is bigger than us. They try to do a meeting like this. They didn't get money. They try to, while you sleep. You get what I mean? Now God has spoken about us doing bigger things. Right today I was coming here and I'm thinking, where do we buy land to build church? Where do we buy land to build church? You know, and you see in that moment when the mind sleeps, you're like, oh, the other church is bigger than you. They have thousands of people and they fail to buy a small land here. They fail. Those are the tears he sold. And you see, you allow them to grow. So eventually the measure of faith is still there, but the unbelief cannot allow it to avail. It cannot allow it to avail. I like it that he said, by faith, we understand. Choose to understand by faith. Choose to understand by faith. Quick response to God's instruction always is like a, a herbicide. Do you know herbicides? Herbicides are the ones you spray for weeds. So quick response to God's because when you take time, that is you sleep, the tears come in. When you take time, the tears come in. Because that is the time you're going to reason and debate everything that God has said. And that is why in the Old Testament you realize that the prophets prophesied by impulse. It is not that today. You know what I mean? Some people want prophets of today to prophesy that way. But that is wrong. That is not New Testament. You know, some are saying, ah, in the Old Testament, if you are a prophet, if you missed it, you were stoned. You know why? Because their human aspect was totally not involved. They were not new creatures. God could not trust them to deliver a message. God had to make them deliver a message. God does not make people deliver today. He does not make them. He gives it to you. And at times it will go through your unrenewed mind. And it, at times it will be contaminated. And God loves it that way. He sees it beautiful. With all those imperfections, it is pleasing to God. I have people I'm working with. You get what I mean? It is just like when my, my on, on, on when? On, on Tuesday, was it Tuesday? I was going to make what? I was making juice and what? So I was washing mangoes. So I called my daughter. I told her, come, let's wash mangoes. So she's very excited to come and help me. So she took one mango. She's splashing water. She's splashing water. She's splashing water. But I was pleased. I, I didn't feel like she doesn't even know how to wash mangoes. Like you, you should really know how to wash. I told her, thank you so much. Thank you for helping Baba. Thank you. And I, I washed it again, definitely. I didn't allow her to see. But you get what I mean? That is what God sees when we are prophesying. That is what God sees when he's flowing through us. And to him, that is more pleasing than the Old Testament, which was perfect, but no human, no human mindset put in it. Because in the Old Testament, the Spirit just took a hold of them and they, they even wondered what they were saying. They didn't know what they were saying. And sometimes it has happened that way, especially when people are learning to prophesy. But God wants us to mature. He wants it to have a personality. He wants us to, he uses our personality also. It comes out with your personality and what. So like, you know, last year after all these American what, many people confirmed that people are not prophets because they missed it. That that is, no. The mark of a prophet is not accurate. That's not the New Testament. You get what I mean? And, and you see, God is pleased. Uh... In the New Testament, Agabus was very accurate, yet it was not prophecy because it did not minister, it did not encourage. And Paul refused it, yet it was accurate. Since the owner of this is going to be tied like this, and, and Paul told him, not only am I ready to be arrested in Jerusalem, but even to die for the sake of the gospel. So the prophecy being accurate did not mean that it was minist it ministered. Praise the Lord. Because that is not the, that is not the, the sole purpose. I, I, I wouldn't like it if I'm the one who took my daughter's hands, made her wash the mango, and what it, it, it wouldn't bring joy to me as a father. But that she can come and know that this is what we are doing. There is a time I could not call her. You get what I mean? Yeah. There is a time she was just lying on her back and there is nothing she can do. But now that I can call her and tell her, come, let's wash mangoes, and she knows to go and pick the mango and bring it where we are washing, that is growth. By the time a child of God can stand here and say, this is what the Lord says, and he even misses it, God is like, that is so awesome. 
there is a time he would not dare stand and say this is what God says but now he can stand and say this to God that is pleasing as a father he's happy he knows they will get it at some time and God does not try to uproot the tears at that time because he knows there is a seed growing and that seed is going to be relevant one time praise the Lord hallelujah so as you listen as you get the word of God as God speaks to you act promptly God is waiting on you to act promptly act on it as you act on it you will avoid the tears having try may you fail sometimes yes but you know secular people have told us failure is not really failure real failure is failing to try again that is failure hallelujah every footballer top scorer they've missed goals yet we talk about them as the top scorers you know we don't remember so much the goals they missed it is me who is telling you about the story when i believed god for rent and failed to pay rent and you see sometimes it shocks people somebody has even come and told me pastor so how did you do that because they were also believing for a similar thing it is me who will tell you the bad stories you will see the victories god will let the victories shine you get what i mean we read god's generous and wow so and so as a man of faith so and so as a man of faith we don't read the stories that's where they had failures because failure is not really failure it is when you stop there that it becomes failure so as long as you're convinced you know fully that this is god i'm following follow i've been on that journey as a pastor and i would support you praise the lord and i will not make you feel foolish i'll try to advise you i'll try but i'll be glad that there was somebody who was daring i would hate it to have a perfect church where people make no mistakes i wouldn't like that church i wouldn't want to pastor that church i want a church where people are daring where i can hear they tried this and it backfired it is not as fatal as in eternity humanly speaking it may seem fatal that what you lost your job you lost your relationship you lost this but there is a day where we're going to stand before the king of kings and all we want to hear is well done good and faithful servant it is better for me to keep failing here be laughed at here but on that day i hear well done good and faithful servant praise the lord that is what we all want to hear and that is why i was praying for you and i still pray for you that you stand hallelujah i really desire that you stand that parable of tears it still applies to the church it is so sad i was telling you on sunday stories when pastor okema was here pastor joffrey but it is so sad i've seen people come to this church and i've seen people leave and it is so sad when i find some of them who are not standing at all it is so sad that some of them within our congregation they were the tears hallelujah as we do soul winning like he said in the parable of the sower it is one out of every four that will stand isn't that sad i pray that all of us in this church should be among that one that we should not be the other three we should not our hearts should not be the ones that fell on thorny in, uh, in the thorny bush the ones that fell on rocky ground that we should be the ones that fell on fertile ground our hearts should be that fertile ground praise the lord because we go we win many souls we'll go to east pocot and we come back we say oh a hundred people got born again and you go back and find that not all of them are standing we keep going on because at least we may win that one we may always get that one and as we keep getting that one it counts and it is the same thing for me as a preacher as a pastor it is so sad that i labor and teach such things and a few months i find that there are people who have fallen out praise the lord but it is a choice that we can make many are called but a few are chosen those few who are chosen decide to be chosen he tells timothy in a house there are many vessels of honor and unto dishonor but he says it is the man who will purge himself that will be fit for the master's use it is not up to god to choose which vessel to use god has given all of us a clean slate he's leveled the ground by what jesus christ did on the cross we all come on no one has advantage some choose to draw back 
Some choose to be taken back by the setbacks of life. What the devil does not want you to know is that every time you're failing, you're failing at a higher level. You know, I've told us that. It is just like if you're a mountain climber. You climb and climb, and let me say your what? 30 meters up there. Yeah? And maybe your rope loses grip. You fall. What Christians do? They walk back down. They say, I failed. But you know, you're forgetting that you're falling 30 meters high. You're not falling back to where you are. The challenges you're having as a Christian, you're having them as a Christian. There's a time you are not a Christian. So the devil does not want to, you to see that actually if it was not for progress, you wouldn't even have had that challenge. That challenge has come because of progress. It is just like even struggle with sin. There's a time you didn't struggle with sin. It was your breakfast. It was your lunch. It was your dinner. As in... You didn't even know there was sin because that's who you are. Now when you got into sin, I've disappointed God, I'm not worthy, I'm not, I can't do anything. The devil can't show you that it's at a higher level. Peter kept failing, but Jesus knew at which level Peter was failing. Peter didn't know, and maybe other people. So I think it was a shock when he leaves Peter in charge. Feed my flock. I'm like, what? Peter who kept failing is the one going to lead. It is because he kept failing at a higher level. He failed because he kept trying to get higher. That is why he kept failing. You guys never failed because you didn't attempt for high altitude. That is why you didn't fail at all. You didn't try. You didn't try. And so like I'm saying this, I failed to pay rent at that time. But when I failed to pay rent, my faith was at a high level. Because before that, I would have never walked out and said I'm looking for a house with no money. So the devil would show me you've been foolish. But God showed me no. Your being foolish was at a higher level. At least you beat fear of trying to trust me. You trusted me. You get what I mean? And that encouraged me. And we came and like I told you, it was, it was not the last time. You get what I mean? It came at a bigger level as a ministry. We lost money to next gen. 700,000. What I lost the other time was less than that. You get what I mean? What my parents had to pay was, it was not even more than 15,000. Now it came to a level where we lost 700,000. How was I able to keep going on? And even dream for this place. You know, it even because the other one was 700,000 that we lost. After announcing, making envelopes, telling people to give. Now we come to this place, get to know how much they need. And I don't even communicate to the church. Until two weeks to move into this place where we need more than a million. That is when I was able to communicate. Why? Because my faith kept growing. And it is still growing. And there are bigger things to dream for. Hallelujah. There are bigger things to dream for. We were able to do Bungoma. And we were able to tell them, go look for the best hotel. We were able to say, go look for the, a good media team, a good, a good media what, company and what. We need videos. We will pay for them. We will do this. Didn't make all these decisions based on our accounts. Didn't do that. Many of you who are here even saw how the miracle came. Bishop Isaiah was here and he said, I'm giving a thousand dollars. Imagine, that was like almost what, less than two weeks before Bungoma. We needed more than 200,000. And the bills for this church are not reducing. But he said, I'll give a thousand dollars. Then different people pledged. Then somebody came and said, Pastor, how much is the balance? I'll give all that is remaining. If I had not learned to trust him early those days, that week I would call off Bungoma. I would say Bungo myself, but God is the one who put it in our hearts to do Ignite. And you see, going out right because God said it, gave no room for the tears to grow. If we had reasoned it, maybe the ministry leadership and said, let's wait until we have money before we make these decisions. Let's wait until, no. 
we started right away made t-shirts made the logo made those things you know somebody would think we have a stash somewhere preparing for those things and it is the same thing how do we call out the sick what guarantee do you have by faith we have understanding that by his stripes they were healed Praise the Lord. On the last day there was this man that was blind. And you see he had come, he had been in the service. I didn't know he was blind, but I saw him every service. So this day we call. So he comes up. So he's prayed for, but he's not, he's not yet seeing. He's saying that nothing has changed. Sight has not improved. So I tell, the, I tell the people, let's believe for this man. Let's pray for this man. And you see, uh, later I was thinking about that scenario and I'm like, would I have done this 15 years ago? You know, on camera, before all people. You get what I mean? So I'm like, okay, it's, it's good that something happened. But even if nothing happened, had happened to that man, I would still come with my head raised. I would still testify about the other things that happened in Bungoma. And the next time I would be in Bungoma, I would still call him out if he was still blind. You get what I mean? It is a journey. It eventually becomes a lifestyle, but we take it on every day. Jesus said when he was talking about the, the woman who went to the un, this unjust judge, your unrighteous judge, he said, shall the son of man find such faith when he comes? That is one of the greatest things that the body of Christ has lost. We've learned order. I'm telling you right now, if you took anyone who wants to be a pastor, you took them to an institute of management, they would be a good pastor. Because now being a pastor is all about management, HR and PR. It is just how you know how to talk to people, how not to offend people, learn intrapersonal skills, learn organization, learn the SWOT analysis. You know, as long as you know those things, you can run a church. You go and walk in this walk in this Nairobi in what? Just walk randomly and go ask many churches how did you handle the COVID time? They will show you their strategy. Faith will not show up. Maybe it will show up in the end. They will just say yeah and God was good. We believed God. After showing you you see we cut on this spending. We did this. Our donors did this. We sent out letters. We did this. We did this. We did. Isn't it what happens today before a church sends out missionaries? The first thing is to raise what? Supporters. That's the first thing. Missionaries that went out. Actually Jesus told them not even to carry their own pass. Leave alone raising finding a, a is it bad for, for us to raise donors or supporters? No, it is not bad. There is nothing wrong with that. Praise the Lord. But you see, it shows you how far we have fallen. Every message I receive normally when people are like, send us support, we are, and then they show you uh, ways you can support. I just know that they are trying to sandwich prayer in there. What they need is money. None of them comes and asks if you're praying for, for us. They remind you that you've not sent the money. They never remind you that you didn't pray. When they go through hardship on the mission ground, they don't come and say, are you really praying for us? No. They say, ah, you didn't send that money you had promised. Because none of them believes that your prayer would sort the situation. It is your money that would sort it. It is so sad that the body of Christ has said, and that is why the body of Christ looks like a circle. Because even these circles, when, when, when they start the AGM, they start with a prayer, isn't it? And they end with a prayer. They can even sing a hymn. Some of these circles have hymn books. Their buses have scriptures. You get what I mean? And they play worship in the bus longer than we do worship in many churches. As in, they, they're even at a higher level. And we are all registered under societies. <laughs> Guided by the society act. <laughs> we should not be such people. As we grow, as God provides, definitely God has brought us a long way. Yeah, there are days I preached like this, and as I was preaching, I was thinking about money to pay for the venue after the preaching. 
you know, we are not there anymore. You get what I mean? Yeah. There are days we used mobile data to do our uploads. You get what I mean? We buy 50 bob and look for those, the bonuses, the ones that is it, is it nowadays I don't even know them. But there are those, is it what MBs, SMSs and what those, those things some of you are still doing. Now, <laughs> It is so nice to speak like that. It, really, it means we've moved on. God has moved us. Hmm? There's a time it's that. We took photos in the service and we are waiting for data. Who has 50 bob? Where can we get 50 bob to buy data and upload? You get what I mean? We've gone away from those days. But God does not want us to make leave of our using faith. And he showed us that last time when we were going to East Pokot. It was the first mission where before going for the mission, we had all the money for the mission. We had everything we needed for that mission. Then Reverend Pato lost his sister. Then insecurity got in there, the markets and the Pokots. So the government is putting curfews there and lockdown. And God spoke to us through my wife and said, money is not what you need. Never drop your faith because you've got money. Something will come that money cannot solve. You get what I mean? Will the son of man find this faith when he comes? Let the tears not grow to hinder your faith. That unbelief, let it go away. Hallelujah. That unbelief, let it not stand. Believe God. Paul told the Galatians, you did well to run. Who stopped you? I know some of us have believed for certain things for so long. You're doing well to run. Don't stop. Yeah? Pastor, I have believed for a marriage. For 10 years I've been believing. No one even asks me out. Let me tell you, you're doing well to run. Yeah? My mother-in-law normally says that if life ended, then we realize that there is no heaven, there has never been God. She's like, we would still say, it was worth it. Look at the good life we lived just because we, cause we feared God. You get it? What if you never get married? It will be worth it that you trusted God all the way. It will be worth it. You get what I mean? But who says that that testimony is not going to happen that day you want to give up? Everything that God has called us for. You may keep failing, but keep running. Keep going at it. Keep going at what God has called you to do. Let us be the example. God has called us as a ministry to be an example. And I know there are many ministries that borrow from us today. Some don't acknowledge it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, but there are things they say and they're like, those guys are living by faith. There are people who are based in other ministries, but when Kikiwumana, yeah? Kukiwuma, Kukiwumana, Kikiwumana, Kikiwumana, Pastor Benjamin, I would like to see you come pray for me. I need a child. Pray for me. Get many people who come to be prayed for. There are somewhere in a church where we are criticized for believing. You get what I mean? But when push comes to shove, they come like Nicodemus in the night. <laughs> Not in a Sunday service. He say, Pastor, I want to see you in the office. Pray for me. Lay hands on me. And I never tell them, but your pastor doesn't believe in this. I pray for them. Praise the Lord. You're believing God. Many people's testimonies are tied to that. It is not just for you. It is for many people around you. Hallelujah. I want you to thank God right now. That he's put the seed of faith in you. That you're not helpless. And I want you also to make a commitment that you will keep believing him. That you will keep following him. That you will not give up on the way. 
that you will not stop. Yeah.